Sounds like um, sounds like Motorhead. Is this? I thought it was uh, like Gollum's new project. I think they were playing this the last time I was at Olive Garden. Yeah. Yeah, in the waiting area. <laughs> really makes you calm and just kind of want to hang out. Bring, brings the ambiance. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm cool waiting a half hour for a fine American eat. dining experience because they will tell you themselves that they are not Italian. No. Well, what's really Italian about it? Yeah, pasta. Yeah. Nobody else has fucking pasta <laughs> on planet Earth. Yeah. It just can't be done. They make no. pasta in cans these days. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, no, brand new, uh, brand new Metallica. So what's uh, or Metallica Motorhead? <laughs> I was I, I was looking down. I was like, do I play, plug in some Metallica for later? No, no. Let's just stay with the with the Motorhead theme. Here. No, we we got plans. It is. Uh, oh, and here come the Golden Shades. Golden Boy Brandon oh, himself. Man. See, now I feel like I'm a totally different person. Yeah, well, you kind of are, and I can do whatever I want now. <laughs> well. With those well, shades on, the uh, the Austin shades. Yes, yeah. they, it's weird. They still smell like liquor. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that probably I rem- is. Their, I remember. Uh, well, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I've I, I saw the picture of me with them on right before we did the Austin podcast, which I vaguely remember that. Yeah, uh, but I don't remember requesting them. I just woke up and they were suddenly in my bag. And then I asked Daryl about it, and he's like, yeah, I gave him to you. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, cool. I want to make sure I wasn't stealing from you. Yeah. No, shades for the golden boy. Yeah, well, they they bring out the best in me. Yeah. And, I'm, and I've only worn them once, and I don't remember wearing them. Yeah. So we'll see how tonight goes. Nah. All right. The uh, second to last podcast of the year 2018 in the year of our Lord. Ah. Uh, Pete Metal into MMA. Indeed. I don't know what episode this is. It's in the hundreds, though. I know that much. Somewhere in the hundos. Hund- it's like a buck of weight. We're, we're it can't be that high, is We're it? officially uh, fighting at Adam weight for podcast now. I want to say because 104 was Thanksgiving. Yeah, you might be right. Might be around 107, 108, something yeah. like that. Shit. We have some uh, top quality bullshit out there. I'm going to hang it up about 110. Yeah, I was thinking more like 105. I think I think we've uh, out, out, outdone ourselves on this. Jump the shark. Yeah. But but then Don came on and then Brett came on. So all of a sudden it was like, nope, the new life is back. We can go another hundred now. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like introducing cousin Oliver to the Brady Bunch. Yeah. It was the like re- reinvigorated. That was really funny. Like the wine and cheese thing. If Daryl had been there, we would have nearly had everybody that's ever been on our podcast. Um, if, yeah, if, except if, for not Bobby wasn't here. When Sam. Uh, Angie wasn't from uh, from Pinpoint, wasn't here. Yeah. Samuel wasn't. No, fuck, what are you talking about? <laughs> we did pretty good, though. We had Don, we had Ruben, yeah. and we had, uh, that was it. That's it, yeah. Okay, that's so it was that, a very low turnout for podcasts. I'm like, guys. what? <laughs> yeah, shit, now, now that I think about it. <laughs> wasn't, that, it wasn't that epic. <laughs> wasn't that epic. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was all good, though. Yeah. Uh, maybe you might get an appearance from Ruben. Probably not on the podcast, but. Right. Here at the, the old Mead Hall, maybe. But uh, anyway, we're uh, going to begin our uh, countdown of things uh, 2018. I've got a, a, a year top, in review. I, I, love, a, I uh, love these. I always look forward to this shit. Yeah, because we'll do one probably this week and probably one next week, I think. Um, Daryl gave me a top five of his uh, of things pertaining to uh, music pertaining to him for yes. 2018. So you have you you've read it. I, I haven't read it. So, yeah, I and I can't be... bust his balls because he ain't here. So, right. yeah. So I'll just straight up read it here after a while. Yeah, and then I'll critique and bust. <laughs> uh, mine will involve the top five podcasts of ours of 2018, in my opinion. Yes, and I decided to go the extra mile, and uh, I'm doing my top ten Alice in Chains songs of all time. Oh, wow. Well, shit. Uh, but don't worry, I won't break down each song. Okay, well. <laughs> I had to do it that way because it made it easier for me. Yeah, because then I, I you tried start. To, yeah. I tried doing three, couldn't do it because the pool's too big. I had to thin the pool out. So, so if like, you go ten, then that way you can derive a top five with uh, with less uh, uh, stress and heartache over yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. it worked out well. Right. I, it took me three hours anyway. We'll get to all that on the way. Uh, in the meantime, as we always do, we uh, begin with uh, checking in with how did the week go for you, my good man. Ah. Uh. The, the, that was the more as a more demure way of asking. That's well. I, I thought I'd go ahead. Kept and, it, kept it, gentlemen. I, I thought I would keep it above above board. Yes, uh, that's yeah. you're a good man. It's the holidays, and yeah, and then I go and leave my fucking, fucking Daryl. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It's, it's fucking weather service. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, sorry, Daryl. Letting us know the wind you. is going to blow today. So it already did. Yeah, I know. Right. On, on on the nut as always. Um, 
it hadn't been a bad week. It's weird, man. It, it, you were we were talking about how we feel like 2018 over a lot of different like areas is closed really strong. Right. Start out shitty, close out strong. Strong jujits. Yes. <laughs> strong strong jujits. <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah, I mean we have this new gal at work and she's she's going to be okay. It's her first job ever. I went into work. It was her first day by herself. Wednesday night, I came in and everything was done. Even some of my shit was done. So she's going to be the one. We got to get her on the podcast so she can bitch about the guy that fucking comes in after her. Uh, <laughs> see, I don't want to get too many workers on the show. No, no, no. I was because it'll turn into like a weird AA meeting. Yeah. No, and you don't want that because then when they inevitably fucking stop working there, right? Then then they've got knowledge on you, you know. Well, I mean, technically, I'm not following the rules of my guidebook by chatting about my realm in a public forum, but I don't give a shit. How public is this? We only got like thirty views a week. That's right. <laughs> uh, and half of them apparently aren't for my job, so that's good. <laughs> but yeah, that that's working out really well. No weirdness. No no strange. It's too cold for strange people. Yeah, you know. Oh, you got some big burly bastard in an orange coat out front smoking every morning when I drive by. Oh, dude. Yeah, he works for the fucking railroad. Oh, okay. He's out there with a little vape box thing just going at it. Yeah. And just sitting outside waiting for this shitty pickup to come grab him every goddamn night. Let's assume he was a hunter, you know. Yeah, That's no. a lot of orange on one no, big I, man. Dem's a laborer. <laughs> uh God, I fucking hate that guy, too. <laughs> well, okay, so then after always, us, hey, it's been a pretty good week to... until Kevin brought that asshole up. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's it's a it's not a hate. That's a pretty a disdain. He, he's he makes requests that I they're small enough that I have to do them, but I fucking hate doing it. Like putting up breakfast ten minutes earlier than I normally oh, do. Is that asshole? That type oh. of shit. I hate that shit. Yeah, yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm is it ten minutes early for you. Fuck that. Yeah. Go, I used I, to I used to own a small business here about like eighteen years ago, and I had a guy fucking working for me who's no longer around. It doesn't bother me to talk shit about the dead. So. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like you moved to fucking Bismarck. No, 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 no. He died. Um, <laughs> not on the job. Not on the well, job. That's good. Yeah. Good. No, no, but it's the same shit. I, I paid every Friday <laughs> afternoon. So I thought, I want to run a company the way I would want to work for a company. I'm going to pay every Friday afternoon. Fucker would come around Thursday night. Hey, uh, you think you can get me my check? Like, dude, really? Damn. Yeah, dude. And, I mean, it, was, it made me want to go, no, you know what? I'm going to start running things like fucking other people do. You're going to get paid every other week on like a Wednesday. So fuck <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> At least uh, at my place, we get paid on the 1st and the 15th of every month. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it could be, the day itself varies, but it'll always be the 1st and the 15th. Mine's very similar, but odd enough to make you go, what? I get paid on the 15th and the last day of the month. So basically, Uh, you can say the 1st and 15th, but technically, oh, hey, I'm getting paid a day earlier. Or you're just weird and going, I'm getting paid on the last day of the month. So there you go. The fuck is this? Yeah. The, uh, Sometimes it's great. Other times it's really inconvenient. Yeah. The uh, second flush of the month. Yeah. <laughs> Did have a, I, I overheard a weird argument in the lobby during breakfast between a Trump supporter and a Trump. Uh, uh, what's the opposite? Uh, American. Oh. <laughs> Everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> there, there comes the thumbs down. No, right no, no, there, no, no. Yeah, there, there it is. Somebody. Oh, fuck these guys. No, no. Uh, ooh, a ooh. Trump supporter and a uh, and a, a uh, detractor. A detractor. There, yeah, there, right. there, there, there it is. Um. I thought it was going to hit a point where I'd have to step in and be like, uh, listen, there's like five other people in here trying to eat breakfast. Would it's you fucking, shut the fuck fucking breakfast. up? How fucking. And how? Just, but these were strangers. God. Initially, someone came down. Uh, Trump shit was on the news and she was watching it and like really defending the guy. Which is fine. But, yeah. you know, to each their own, I suppose. She was in there alone talking to her fucking self. Either that or thinking I was going to hear it and goad me into some kind of shitty conversation that, about politics. That's how, po- that's how people, that that's all they have is yeah, politics. They put that little lure out. Yeah. Like, man, that's pretty great. That Trump guy, right person who's behind the desk right. and must agree with me. Yeah. No, no, the, 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 the two sides are wearing me the fuck out. Yeah. The, the, those that... Because, face it, fucking guy can't do anything right. Not that I want to get off on a weird political tangent, but all these assholes are like, why are we in all these wars? Bring them home. Why are we there? He fucking announces, all right, bringing everybody home from Syria. Bah, you're going to destabilize the whole area. 
<laughs> just he he's fucked. He I mean, I'm not trying to show yeah. sympathy oh, no, for the no. fucking I, see, guy. I, I totally dig. With God you, damn no. it! Just I mean, he, he, we we've reached a point. If if the party wearing the the blue tie or the red tie, and if you don't like that party, whatever they do, you're going to be in, in opposition. Yeah, it's like. It's the old Metallica or. fans and new Metallica fans, man. It's the same argument. It's the either or society. That's yep. what we live in. It's it's either or. You're either this or you're that. Well, fuck you. I I run my own path, but that's right. You know, I, I don't I run think the pagan path. I don't think he's the fucking worst president we've ever had, but he's fucking goddamn sure not the best. You know, halfway through and it's not looking too good. No, no, uh, it's just too much weird corruption and shit like that and wacky things going on. The, well, I know, I know, know. it's bad because uh, I have an uncle who works in the stock market. Yeah. And uh, every Christmas, he'll usually come by for like a day or two. To come see come see the old grandma and spend some time with her and say hi to me. Right. You know? uh, basically gives me some, some time off from my duties down there to come down and get weird here. Yeah, occasionally we'll uh, pick up a bottle of mead from us too. So, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, couldn't do it this year because he's busy because the stock market is busy dropping hundreds of points a day yeah, shit. i mean I, I he called today it's like i'm sorry i'm not gonna be able to make it this weekend and i'm like why because uh stock market turmoil it's like yep like don't even worry about explaining it to her don't worry about explaining it to me either i won't understand it but i like the chaos i, I like the chaos of things i it, until it costs me my job but right. um well you're in radio you should be good. Eh, maybe well, you never know but the thing Everybody's is the radio. uh it was, it was like it's crude oil is what I always keep track of. And crude oil is like a 72 bucks a barrel like two months ago. It's a 45 bucks a barrel today. Shit. Which means like fucking no money. All that surplus I kept talking about for the state of New Mexico, that surplus ain't going to be there. So, I, I, and I do. I want, to, I want to see a new governor come in and have to face the fucking fact of thinking there was going to be billions of dollars to spend and all of a sudden they got to cut shit. And, uh... The one option for a guaranteed surplus of cashola is just is, is it's a it's a paper away, man. Just legalize the weed. Oh, a rolling paper away. Yes, okay, a, yes, a zigzag <laughs> away. <laughs> yeah, you um, know it, it's the easiest fix. It'll happen. It'll oh, happen yeah. eventually because I, I think the biggest thing is the state of New Mexico likes to figure out a way to tax the fuck out of everything. And and, may, yeah. and make things that are fun not so fun. Look at booze. The excise tax we pay on booze is higher than any state. Oh, yeah, man, booze and smokes. It's horrible. But the thing is, I think that's what it is. They just can't figure out a way to get their grimy little hands all over the tax money of it. That's, that's the only reason it hasn't been legalized yet, in my opinion. Well, and they get a really good bite off of the medical side. They really do. Yeah. I, I, well, okay, I, but now you do notice New Mexico is like California was like eight years ago. Now, basically, almost anybody can get a card. You know, yeah. and that's the way it is. You know, and I think when they when they put it over to a recreational basis, you're going to see uh, the folks on the medical side, or their taxes are going to go up even more. I'm not sure how that's going to work because every dispensary I went to in Colorado, they had the recreational side, yeah, and then they had the medicinal side, right? And I'm I'm thinking they have it separated for a reason because the prices and the taxes are completely different. Yeah, but when California, that's the perfect example, though, because when they went over to uh, recreational, the medical went up. Wow. And, you know, and I mean, but yeah, the medical went from, I, don't, I forget what it was in California, 15 up to like 20 percent, something like that. Damn. Um, yeah, but the recreational is like 30 some odd percent. Well, it still beats street prices. Well, I guess. And I don't I don't get the argument. I, I don't understand the argument. I had somebody in law enforcement that I'd uh, had a conversation with about that once. It's, why don't we just legalize it? Shit. It, it gets fucking people that aren't really criminals out of the, keeps them out of the jails, you know? I mean, that's got to be a win-win. And they said, well, because it empowers the uh, cartels. Uh, oh, what? How, how, how does it empower cartels when it suddenly then becomes a legal business that legal residents of this country can then grow it for sale on the, uh, you know, the various dispensaries and, or whatnot right. or whatever, I don't understand. They said, no, no, because then the cartels don't even worry about weed anymore. Then they start worried about meth and everything else. I thought, that, 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 makes, that, that doesn't make that, any sense, though. Yeah, they already worry about that. Yeah, right. I, How can I they don't, worry more about it when they're already doing it a lot? It doesn't, it, it, the argument fell on dumb ears on my part because I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't pick Dude, up what around here, out. that argument is best left kept in your own fucking mind. Man. It really is. Yeah, I mean, I, it, whether you're for it, whether you're against it, 
it doesn't matter. It's eventually going to happen. So oh, yeah. just you know, get your head around that idea. It's gonna nobody's going to sh- nobody's going to show up at your house and force you to fucking <laughs> light up a doobie. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I'll be wearing these motherfuckers too. Uh, the gold shades. God damn. All right. I know they're pretty sexy, man. Uh, my week was relatively easy. I got to say this though, because I, uh, I I think I mentioned this on the show before. I'm like in a new role within the company. Yes. So, so instead of having this weird split time, like I was working like at a ski shop or something like that, where I have this huge lunch break in the middle of the day and come back in late, I, I do it all in in one row, eight eight hours in a row, which is not bad for normal people. I had like over a decade, like eleven, twelve years, twelve years. Of fucking taking a nap in the middle of the day. I'd work. I'd work Which like became your norm. Yeah, I'd work like four hours, and then I'd come home, have lunch, pass out for like an hour, hour and a half, and go back fresh as a daisy. You know, do the rest of the afternoon. And then I was done. Now I don't get that. I got to plow all the way through the thing, and uh, and by the time I wrap things up and get shit done, running errands or Christmas shopping yeah, or whatever afternoon wind. Uh, it's like two, three o'clock in the afternoon. It's like that's way too fucking late to be taking a nap. Otherwise, it'll wreck the evening sleep. You know. Yeah. So I feel, yeah. I feel like a fucking one of the zombies off a of Night of the Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. It can be tough. Like my transition from working to getting days off, it, Thursdays are tough. Yeah. Like after I left here yesterday, I went, I fucking crashed. Yeah. No. Yeah. But it's it's it's. Ugh. I mean, uh, I'd it's, tough it's, to, w- I, it's tough to get a good nap in. I'd say it's whatever the body gets used to. But the problem is, God, man, it's, I've been on this new role for. Um, I don't know, month and a little over a month, month and a half. Yep. Ooh, I've not, I've not settled it down yet. Now I don't feel like I'm dying when I first started the show. I was, I was, going, I was like, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Kill me. Kill me, Harry. Uh, but anyway, so I'm past that. Now I just feel like I'm a, a member of the undead. How about three shots of Jaeger? You'll be good. Well, I, then I will be a member of the undead. I'm um, moving on. Mead, metal, and MMA. Thanks for joining us for our humble podcast this evening. Indeed. Indeed. Merry Krimbus. The <laughs> which has got me to saying the same shit, which is not kosher. It, it, it's very they're... interesting. Well, yeah, because you actually have a job where you do ha- talk to a lot of people yeah. on a daily basis. But uh, it's amazing how you'll pick up other people's quirks yeah. if you're around them enough. Right. I, I've seen it happen. I mean, like, I don't say it on purpose. But I will say different words just to see if someone will, like, latch on to one. Right. And Krimbus is just an easy one because yeah. it comes around once a year. And, you know, who wants to be bothered saying Christmas? I say Krimbus. <laughs> Merry Xmas. And that yes. well, if you want to start a fight, that's the yeah. way to do that. You can say Krimbus. It almost sounds like Christmas, but you're not saying Christmas. Yeah. Um, uh, let's get on to things, mead side of things. Uh, tomorrow we're going to start a new batch for the White Shadow Ranch. Those of you sick of us talking about that the first time around, well, prepare. Yeah, round two, bitches. It's going to be a good time. I think we're going to, um, I think it might be a good time for us to go ahead and get a, uh, um, a first batch of 2019 underway. Yeah. Have we decided on what that's going to be? No. <laughs> In good. a word, good. no. Um, I, think, I think what we'll do, I, th- I wouldn't be opposed, actually, to doing a uh, a batch one, which is our baseline batch, it's uh, there's nothing in yeah. it. It is a straight mead, nothing I was fancy. Thinking the same thing. We haven't done but, a batch one in a long time, but with a uh, with a little bit of a twist, and that okay. is to utilize a different yeast, utilize the big boy. Oh, the troublemaker yeast. Yeah, the the cuvee. That's right, mm. premier cuvee. Utilize that instead of the uh, the uh, Lalvin, you know, yeast. Uh, that of might turn it green. And uh, make it hulky. I don't know, but it will certainly make it a, a high end. I yeah, mean, it'll give it more of a punch. That yeast has got a uh, survivability rate. Um, I think uh, upwards of sixteen and a half to eighteen percent. Can't you know? keep a good man down. Yeah, so or a good yeast. That might be something to think about. I like it. I, I already like it. Yeah. So and we haven't I, done a batch one in a year and a half, probably. Maybe two years. It's been a long time. Yeah, that yeah. that one right there. That was the last one we did. Yeah, uh, the, the old label on the mirror. Yeah, yeah, Grow, it's growing. It'd be yeah. nice to have uh, both sides. That bottom half fucking filled up. Well, yeah, maybe. Well, maybe one day. One day, one day as we create new and amazing things. Um, because that's the option. Um, the other thing we could consider if we wanted to. Now we don't. We're not under the gun to do it yet, but. If we want to do a Holiday King batch for 2019, mm-hmm. we need to probably think about getting that started at a minimum 
no later than March. You know? Give that thing a solid six months. Yeah, I'd pref- preferably nine. I'd like that thing to have a baby in December. Oh, you'd <laughs> want to start in March and have, <laughs> and have that shit ready to go like day of yeah. the holiday season. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Wouldn't be bad. Right. I, I mean, mean, probably, you know, I think a solid like a solid six months in uh, in a carboy. And, and, then, and, and then and then bottle it and give it an extra three. And it would be easier to control the temperature yeah. in the hotter times. Right. So there'd be a little more consistency there. I think so. Um, it seems like our batches that are made over the summer, when I'm always concerned about the uh, temperature controls, yeah. actually have more consistency to them. Because, man, I'll let this house get fucking cold in the right. winter if it wants to, you know. Fuck yeah, man. So I'm, I, I don't see a problem with that at all if we wanted to get a work on a holiday batch because we could start batch one like tomorrow, as we're right. uh, yeah as we're getting batch one wrapped up we can start on holly king yeah and while we wait for holly king if we want to do like one more little small run in there it wouldn't be a problem at all yeah yeah i mean i i'm, I'm not opposed to the idea you know and, I, and it's nice it's nice to have it's nice it's nice to have nice. a uh, to have batch one around because that way if somebody's like oh i've never had mead before well here you go here is a straight mead with nothing yeah. fucking crazy about it. You give so. it one with green chili and apple in it. They're like, God damn, I didn't realize this was about. It's like, well, it's, it's not. It's not. But it, that's it, what yeah. that's all about. Right. Um, so anyway, that's something to consider moving forward. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll be doing a uh, wide shadow ranch batch again, and uh, and then and then starting our own five gallon you know run. Getting back to work. I thought about doing it in smaller batches. It just sounded like a lot of work after a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, probably nothing wrong with doing a five. So yeah. yeah. Eh, fuck it. All right. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> that is a look at the uh, mead portion of the show. Um, let's head to Daryl's top five, shall we? Ooh. Did it? Did it? Yeah. Did it? Did it? Did it? Yeah, yeah. I think I, I went from one song into like the Mega Man theme. Maybe. Da 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 Daryl's top five music moments of 2018. And he even gives it a proper countdown. Number five. And by the way, he said he really had to think about it, kept coming back to his personal music experiences for the year, adding, uh, I hope it's worth your time to present on the Mead, Metal, and MMA podcast, <coughs> which I would say we shall see. Yeah, we you're shall about see. to be judged, sir. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about to be judged here. Uh, yeah, number five. Yeah. He says that re-energizing my love of live music, chasing my chops and playing lots more guitar, creating music and rebuilding my pedal board for the third but never final time. Mm. God, that, so the, that dude's got a fucking serious so the, pedal So this board, is like his, own, like his own personal... His personal experience with music over 2018. I like it. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that fucking pedal board is massive. God, I can't believe... When I was there both times, and I didn't fucking step on anything of his. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that had been roundhouse to the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. This guy's a trained killer. Yeah. The last thing I want to do, I, I had to fucking make sure I didn't steal his glasses, for Christ's sake. <laughs> uh, number four for uh, my brother Daryl on his countdown top five uh, personal things involving music for him, at least on a personal level. Uh, the arrival of two new electric guitars to add to the arsenal and... Releasing the mindset that I would never, ever enjoy playing a Telecaster. Uh, red Paisley Flames and Strat Wiring are a nice touch. Yeah. I, I wouldn't play a Telecaster either, although I own one. Um, he but, posted um, a picture of that Telecaster, right? Do what? That, he, he posted, it was that picture of that, that one Telecaster he put on uh, his Facebook. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, now granted, that thing is fucking, it's not, it's not stock. That's for fucking sure. I mean, yeah. that thing is a beast. But, right. Yeah. Uh, number three, I like this one. Almost getting to tour Japan for two weeks with a cover band. Oh Almost. God, damn! <laughs> like that's a tough. He, he's putting that in to give himself way more grief, <laughs> man. Why is he doing that to himself? Uh, Daryl, it'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah, well, fucking a, man. Yeah. Uh, number two, seeing Joe Bonamassa. He uh, used to be the uh, lead guitar player for um, uh, BB King. I was by about the way, to say Bon Jovi. Yeah, no, no. Joe Bonamassa at Austin City Limits and uh, taking our sister Cheryl to see her first rock concert to boot. He says, what my was third rock concert. <laughs> yeah, oh, Joe Bonamassa. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. I, I, okay, I wasn't trying to be a dick there. I thought maybe it was a second concert he took her to. Yeah, he said, This is my third time to see him live, and Joe's guitar playing killed. He was beyond amazing and hands down a guitar hero. Seeing this set totally cemented him in my mind as one of the 
greatest guitarists on the planet. Wow. And Ever. That- and he that said, was at the uh, uh, similar venue. Same venue. Same venue. So wow. I thought Sis was going to toss her panties. There you go. <laughs> I like it. Nice and respectful. You love yeah. to hear that. Yeah. And the number one moment oh, of 2018. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Seeing Alice in Chains at ACL with uh, Kevin and Brandon. Blown away how expansive, energetic, musical, and powerful their live show is. Along with a weekend full of rip-roaring and hilarious shenanigans. I'm assuming he's talking about our show, the Mead, Metal, and MMA podcast. I'd like to think yeah. so, yeah. Being expansive, energetic, musical, and powerful. But I think he might be talking about Alice in Chains. <laughs> okay, well, you know, <laughs> either way, I- I'd say that is a pretty solid 2018 musically. Except for number three. Number three is not solid. Because you're, That's he's a what ra- might have been, yes. Yeah, he's ranking the boner he had and the blue balls afterwards. Yeah. yeah. But damn, I mean, shit, when, who's going to ask me to tour Japan that's not in like a weird sex circus, you know? Well, sex circuses are how you get to tour Japan, right? Okay. Oh, so, oh, <laughs> shit. Should just give well, me a call if he couldn't have made it. I don't know. Well, if, if you're a lady from the Philippines, I understand. So Ooh. there's that. Yeah, that's a little, a little rough. A little rough. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, there we go. That's, uh, that, that's a really, ten. really cool top five. And, or top uh, five. Uh, God, yeah. I bet that pedal board's just going to turn into a. His whole entire floor, man. Man, that... Uh, that I, don't, I don't even know how, you, how to wire that up, let alone navigate it live. Yeah. Well, and obviously to reorganize that thing is a fucking task. So. Oh, man. Yeah, you got to fucking dedicate an entire day for it, I bet. Oof. All right. We well, got three uh, of them here. Yeah. And we use them pretty separately. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we got... Uh, I mean, the MXRs are all analog, and then we've got the Mel 9, so yeah. And that rat. I mean, uh, yeah, so actually we got four... Um, but I mean, we don't, we don't really. Um, there, there's one we don't really use a lot. Um, yeah, that, yeah. I don't know. I need to find a good overdrive pedal. It wouldn't bother me too much. But no. I gotta say, frankly, the fucking the natural tone that comes off of the Marshall, and in your case, off of your orange. Yeah, I mean, all I gotta oh. do is turn the gain up a little bit. It's like, oh, I'm in playing in a different stratosphere now. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, w- which there's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, pedals help you dial in the sound you're looking for. I just, I, I just like the raw sound of a Marshall. So it's, yeah, well, it, mean, it, it, keeps, got it, it keeps me humble. If you so. got it in the hardware already, why tinker with it? All right, we'll get back to our uh, top fives. Uh, indeed, indeed. Get on into the metal side of the Mead Metal and MMA podcast. Yes. Um, this was really, really hard to do. It was great because I got to listen. To a lot of Alice in Chains today. Oh, oh, you want to do your top five then? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, 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 I thought we were jumping right back in. Yeah, well, no, I thought we were going to hit another segment and then come back. Oh, okay. But I'm cool with that because there was actually something I wanted to talk about on the on the metal side. Okay. Uh, uh, The guitar player from Cannibal Corpse. uh, His name's Pat O'Brien. Okay. He. uh, So he's Albanian, obviously. You said that. I just saw a picture. It was like, could not be further from Albania. <laughs> oh, man. He got arrested a couple weeks ago Uh-oh. Uh, for burglary, uh, burglary. Okay. Well, at least it wasn't the weird shit that had happened to other metal bands we'd seen in uh, last an year. Occupied dwelling with assault and aggravated assault of a law enforcement officer. He rigged up fire flamethrowers to burn his house down while he did this. Burned it to the ground. Military grade flamethrowers. Is this like a uh, an insurance job? <laughs> uh, I don't know because then he went to a neighbor's house and like was trying to murder this broad. I guess. I got I got so many questions. This but, is a guitar yeah. player, Cannibal Corpse. Yeah, these guys are supposed to play with Slayer on their finally their, their final their, their, leg. Their, their, their final final tour. Yeah. this time. Yeah, the final tour of 2019. Um, so. Basically, they finally, the band themselves, put out a statement like, eh, we're just pulling for our bro. However, everything we've planned to do, we are still going to do. And there's a whole bunch of fucking fundraisers and shit for it. It's really weird, man. I don't understand it. I don't yeah, understand. The, the motivation behind what... I, mean, I Like I said, I have so many questions. I don't know... Okay, apparently, so some ill will, I guess. Apparently, the, this dude is insane. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, off off the edge and saying, right? Yeah, man. I mean, shit. It, I don't... And he's a guitar player for a pretty notable 
death no, I mean metal Cannibal band. Corpse is fucking huge on death metal. Yeah. yeah, they were in Ace Ventura: Pet Detective for fuck's sake. God damn. The part where he's up there singing with the that metal band. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's fucking them, Cannibal right? Corpse. When uh, Chris Barnes was the front man, the singer is six feet under. Why did I think that was Lamb of God? Okay, well, no, Lamb of God. Shit, now they've been ninety three. I don't think they were even conceived no. yet. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, that is a little wacky. Yeah. Uh, the only new music I have to talk about today is Soul Work put out a new one, and uh, which I we'll, we'll, we'll jam it later. Uh, they got a new album coming out called Verk Verk Li- Verk Liaton. Okay. Verk Verk Liaton. I'm probably saying that 100 percent wrong. Uh, January 11th. Swedish, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, put out a song called Stalfugel. Stalfugel. I'm probably saying that fucking wrong too because the A's have circles over them. Yeah. Uh, I listened to it today in between my my Alice in Chains pickings, and it's really good. It's better than shit I've heard in the past ten years from them. Wow. And I'm a I'm a Soil Work fan. I like these guys. I've liked them. Uh, I bought their first album at Fye back when we had one. Of God them. damn, that's that's been a long time ago. Yeah, 2003, I think. Right. I bought their uh, uh, stabbing the not stabbing the drama. Ah, uh, shit. Can't remember the name of it. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I know you're not big on the Swedish. No, no I've been, soil works. I've, I've tried to like them. I have tried. I physically sat down and went, look, obviously I'm not hearing something here that somebody else is. That's somebody else. This one you. has like a completely dis- different sound. Okay. Well, so, I mean, I'll, I'll keep an open mind. Yeah, I, I, I know you will. But that's that's really all the lo- new music I got. Yeah. Um, dropped today live at Brixton Academy, London, England, October 22nd, 2000. Long name for a uh, record, yeah. But it is Motorhead's new one, newest one. I, I don't know. I, I imagine we're probably going to get fed new live albums from Motorhead every couple of years. Yeah, I'm really happy that, you know, an entire band can die, yet they can still put albums out. 23 tracks on this bitch. <laughs> Tupac ain't got shit on Motorhead. No, I, I, no. No, no, matter of fact, I'm waiting for Lemmy sightings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no shit, right? <laughs> Oh, man. I'm not surprised. We, I'm, I'm shocked we haven't had him yet. He's been yeah. dead for like three years. God. Yeah. Has it been three? Uh, two 2015, or three. I want to say. Three years. Because his birthday is like the day after or day before Christmas. Yeah. And he died a couple days after because, that. Well, because he was a gift. So. Yep. Yeah. He, he, was a, he was a gift, but not for... I think he's more of a gift for the other shit than Motorhead. Really? Uh, maybe. I don't Dude know, was a hell of a songwriter. To quote the movie Airheads, though... Um, True, you know, true or false, uh, you know, what what was it? Fucking in Lemmy or God, right? Uh, it, it's like you had to pick between Lemmy or God. Right. And then and said, yeah, trick wrong. And trick Lemmy questions, is Lemmy is God. Right. Yeah, there it is. That was uh, Mr. Buscemi that said that. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Actually, probably his greatest role, in my opinion, <laughs> playing the fucking crazy weird pool cleaner. Yeah. Uh, or no, that, well, that was actually uh, Pip, his brother, Adam right. Sandler. But yeah. but <laughs> Yeah. Airheads oh, being one man. of the uh, movies that shaped my life as an adult. So yeah, fucking uh, Lemmy is born on Christmas Eve and died uh, December twenty eighth, twenty fifteen. Wow, man, it has been three years. That's uh, that's crazy. That is a little crazy. Wow, man. All right, well, I let's go ahead and move along to your Alice in Chains picks. By the way, happy birthday tomorrow to Eddie Vedder. By the way, yeah, no shit. Uh, happy birthday to that jaded, old, cantankerous man. Angry about a lot of things. Eddie, Eddie, get some help. You're going to die angry. <laughs> die angry with rings around your eyes and alone. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, though, uh, let's go ahead and check in on Brandon's top five, which is actually a top <laughs> ten. I do believe I just, uh, I think that was Street Fighter 2. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing video game music for these, <laughs> for these openings. I'm stuck on Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Um, honorable mention does go to Man in the Box for this reason. It was the first Alice in Chains song I ever heard, and it got me pumped up to go do Paintball and Clovis back in the 90s. It was like our jam song to get ready to be hurt. Yeah. The only problem I have with that song, radio killed it for me. Oh, but, fuck yeah, yeah. dude. It's, 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 it's the most overplayed Alice in Chains single of the Lane Staley era. Yeah, that Probably one, the that one or Rooster, those two. Yeah, but no. Oh. Yeah. But I'll still I'll leave Rooster on. Okay. If, Alice, if Man in the Box comes on, you know, I'm cool with it, but if I want to listen to something else, I'll fucking change it. Number 10, Rotten Alpha. Rop, Roppel, 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 Rotten. God damn, I should not have had that shot of Jaeger right before we started. Uh, Rotten little, Apple. A little retarded. <laughs> Rotten Apple off of the Jar Flies album. Uh, number nine, 
hollow off of the devil put dinosaurs here god i just gotten really familiar with this song after rain or fog came out yeah and holy shit man you want to talk about a song if you really sit and listen to these lyrics it's a dark song jerry cantrell's a warped dude man. i know but he strikes me as having like a pretty jovial life well, that's because he hangs out with the likes of fucking W. Or Brown and whatnot. Yeah. You know? He's like, so, oh, uh, cool, I get to be in the Deadwood movie. That's yeah. that's awesome. And then he goes home and writes music like this. Yeah. <laughs> no no joy to be had. Well, he might be an overly happy person, and so writing shit like this brings him down to a, a reasonable, sane level. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, that's might, actually not a bad a, way of looking at it. He might be a little manic. He just got to <laughs> pull himself down a little. Um, and also the music video that accompanies it is really poignant as well. Because it's the epitome of, like, shutting yourself down and pushing everybody else away while you're just in your own little realm doing your own thing while you lose your mind that you feel like no one gives a shit about you. Yeah. You know, it's it's a weird, vicious fucking cycle. Rummer. Rummel. Rubber rabble. <laughs> <laughs> Start, couldn't start resist. Talking like a stupid Scooby-Doo now. No, no, no. That's that Blazing Saddles. So oh. Yeah, from Gabby, Gabby, I, uh, I thought, <laughs> Gabby Johnson. <laughs> I thought you were making fun of me again with Robin yeah. Apple. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, number eight, uh, Alice in Chains, clearly. Wood, off of dirt. Yeah. 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 Jam- I, I, it's, all, I, it's, it's just a fucking one of the heavier jams. It, of it is. And I will, I will say this. I think my biggest problem is I have a problem with a lot of dirt because of the fact that everything on that was a hit. And mm. everything on that hit, uh, hit record was jammed down yeah, your throat. Dirt's their biggest album. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, because I think that I think a lot of radio promoters and programmers, by the way, uh, in the nineties, they kept trying to Pearl Jam clearly put out a wonderful first album, an okay second album, and then it began to really slide at about the third one. And I think that people went, um <laughs> Can we can we find a grunge <laughs> band that isn't so goddamn weird? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, dude, it got because damn it, Cornell they had, left Soundgarden. I mean, it, it left the grunge movement, you know, and, and STP and then jumped, the jumped like, We're to not. basically Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. So I mean, it was a weird time. So it was like, no, we have to make Allison change the hit grunge band, and they didn't want to be. Yeah. So and, I mean, and then right at that time when uh, they needed him the most, fucking, uh, there was nothing to be had. Yeah. You had Jerry Cantrell putting shit out, which was good enough. Yeah, but he didn't Degradation start that trip, until I think, the, came out around that time. The late nineties, yeah. Yeah, that's which is probably his my kind of, favorite of his solo efforts. Uh I like Boggy Depot as well. Yeah. I think I find myself going to Boggy Depot more because of the fact that it is a little bit of a darker record. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and I, I I think you you can get at peace with Jerry Cantrell on his more depressing shit. So all right, what else you got? Number seven. Love hate love off of facelift. I was wondering if you'd put in anything off of that record or yeah. not. Well, I put Man in the Box as an honorable mention, but the, the, the deeper shit on that album is really good. You're, you're hearing a really young Alice in Chains, really raw and unrefined at the time, uh, putting out some dark shit. And it got darker, but the music got better right. as time went on, you know? Uh, after that, number, number six is uh, Down in a Hole. Yeah, again, but again, that's another one of those. Another one I off think, dirt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's one I don't listen to a lot, but it, when I do hear it, it I have I have an immediate connection with it. Baseline in that fucking track is a little uh, above and beyond what I probably had listened for before. You yeah, because now we're in the in the role of having to both of us have to fucking pick up the bass. You yeah, know, right? To do the hey shit man, I can play do. wood on bass. Yeah, I but, can do that shit. But uh, but I mean, but down in a hole. Uh, yeah, man, Mike Inez nails that, he it. Yeah, that's, shines. That, that really is the shines unsung that hero. That entire song. You're yeah. absolutely right. It's Mike Inez's bass line in that. Let's see, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, number five. The one you know off of Rainier Fog. I was wondering when we'd get the first appearance of a Rainier Fog song, but um, and I thought it would be in the top five. Yeah. No, I really had to fight to put Rainier all, the whole fucking album, because <laughs> it's ten songs. Yeah. It would have been easy. Just been yeah. like, here's my top ten. Here's my top ten Rainier favorite Fog albums chain songs in order. Time. There you go. <laughs> Moving on. No, I had to make some tough choices here. Like, making a top three favorite songs off of Rainier Fog would be easy. Yeah. But yeah, having to keep some keep some of the, like Red Giants not on here. 
Oh, okay. See, I almost Fly is not I almost there. thought that you would have that would have had that like at one or I, two. I'm, I'm going. I'm well. It, it's the there's the reason for this is because a lot of the older shit still has some really serious punch with me. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, but I had to pick the songs that spoke to me the most off of Rainier Fog. Sure. Um, and the one you know, well, shit. I'm wearing the goddamn shirt. This is my Friday shirt. Right. It's it. The entire song is amazing. Lyrically, if you're bummed out and you listen to this song, prepare to can still be bummed out for about a solid month. Yeah, but but you'll feel a weird uh, peace. You'll feel your okay soul. with yeah, it. Yeah. You'll understand it and still be able to be a functioning member of society while still going back to your fucking hole and dealing with shit. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Alrighty, number four, uh, don't follow from Sap. No, from uh, that's from Jar Flies. Don't yeah, follow. okay. Uh, that one, again, not a whole lot really to say about it other than it's super depressing. And if I'm bummed out, if I'm in my blue period. Right. This not get- that anyone ever gets in those. No, yeah. no. Who would? Who would? We're all way too jovial here these days. <laughs> uh, just another one of those great, depressing Alice in Chains songs. One of the best. Because it's just basically saying goodbye to everybody. Right. You know, I think I'm going to get the fuck out of here. I'm saying goodbye. Just don't fucking follow me. Leave right. me alone. Yeah, which, uh, you know, I mean, and you could read too much into that, as a lot of people do. But sure. Yeah, yeah it, it is what it is. What do you got for number uh, what, Number three? Trey, taking the bronze for my heart and Alice in Chains is a right turn off of Sap, the song that has Chris Cornell on it. I was wondering about that. That was actually the one I was wondering about. I, I thought, surely you're not going to have anything off of that because they didn't play anything off of Sap live, I don't think. No, no, so. um, I, unless... The song from Clerks is on Sap. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, I think. I don't know. It, that's either on Sap or Jar of Flies. I don't, I don't know. My biggest problem when you start asking me about music from Clerks is I always think of fucking... Uh, Berserker. Uh, um, is what? Berserker. <laughs> no, no. Um, Got me wrong from Clerks. Yeah, the... Uh, no, I always think of... Not Collective Soul. Um, soul... <laughs> collect so but what the oh fuck? soul asylum soul asylum yeah yeah again there's that which weird sounds like bull, psilocybin. That weird bullshit what sounds like psilocybin but it's not quite psilocybin so. <laughs> uh but the uh right turn i mean shit man you got lane staley and chris cornell on the track right and jerry cantrell singing sure. as well it is the perfect storm it's not a depressing song it might be lyrically. I, I have. It's just too goddamn groovy, man. Yeah. Chris Cornell comes in and brings the the passion. Right. Ah. Oh. Well, I think now I know what your two and one are. But go right ahead. W- would you like to hazard a guess? I'm going to guess Rooster at two and Nutshell at one. You you were right. That one song is one or two. Okay. Uh, but Rooster is not on my okay. list. Okay. Well, I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Number two, my silver medal for my heart is All I Am off oh, okay. of Rainier Fog. Yeah, fuck that yeah. fucking song is is my is my Paul Bear. That is my Paul Bear jam. Right. That is my plea for understanding on this song. My uh, yeah, and and it's okay for us to have a divergent opinion. That's actually one of my least favorite tracks on yeah. that fucking record. But that's for me. Right. For me. No, the, the lyrical content of this. The it's just one of the most depressing songs I've yeah. ever heard, you know, and f- saying that for Alice in Chains is a lot. Right. Um, it, it's and not to say that this song might fall a little bit as the years pass and a new album comes out. But as of right now, that is my go to. Uh, and only if I've already heard my number one. Yeah. Which is Nutshell. Right. Off of Jar Flies. Which actually is the deepest cut, I would say, on Jar of Flies. Yeah. But. but everybody likes to cover that shit. <laughs> apparently. Apparently musicians love it. Yeah. General public may not even be aware. but Yeah, you know. which, I mean, I, I think uh, if you're a, even a moderately hardcore Alice in Chains fan and you've heard the Unplugged album, you know about Nutshell. Because right. they open it with that. Yeah. You know, I think people have heard that version more than the actual album version. Sure. Um, the only thing surprising, I think, is you didn't put voices anywhere in there. I've just recently started enjoying that song. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's really started to grow on me. Yeah. Listen to it today as I came back from uh, Clovis with uh, 
goddamn PlayStation VR headset. Oh. <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> that just happened. The Christmas gods are good. Yeah. All right, so there we go. Uh, so doubling up our top five is Brandon with his top ten. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for thanks for indulging me on that. That, that was good. Let's I worked get, really hard on that. Let's get to the um, MMA side of the podcast, which will be pretty quick because there are no fights this weekend, and I don't want to spoil 232 by talking about it this week. Yeah. The only thing that might spoil 232 is uh, apparently Chris Cyborg loves riding around in shopping carts and jumping out of them. And falling and... I, falling I mean, I can, hard, dude. Now, I don't see her dropping out of this fight no matter what. But if that was Amanda Nunez, this she fight broke would be her off. fucking hip. She's done. <laughs> well, yeah, that it. it if but you can she's imagine, made a pretty stern stuff. If you can man. imagine a great big dude in a shopping cart and then trying to jump out, of the person pushing the shopping cart lets go and it starts to spin on an axis as it does. And as we all know, Jimi Hendrix talks about axis. You know the. <laughs> but uh, if if that stupid friend of hers had kept both hands on that handle, yeah. she, that would not have happened. But as it turned out, no, shopping cart starts to move. As soon as, as, soon as your yeah. weight goes one way, the cart goes the other. You got a 180-pound woman jumping out of a shopping cart held on by an 80-pound woman. Yeah. But, uh, good idea abounds, you know. I do think that, uh, that Amanda Nunez still has time to pull out of this fight. So we'll oh, yeah. see. But there's anyway, going we'll, 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 we'll to be a weird nasal thing. We'll worry about that next week. Uh, like I said, I don't want to steal anything. Yeah. No, well, really, uh, just the fact talking about Chris Cyborg, that's recent news. That yeah. shit just happened. Just happened. Uh, Donald Cerrone is pretty sure he'll fight Conor McGregor. I, you know what? I, I, I had actually had said that right after he lost to Khabib. I said, look, th- that's the fucking money fight. You know, they're, th- if they're going to try to capitalize on getting money out of Conor McGregor in the UFC, he has got to fight somebody that's going to fucking put asses in seats and sell pay-per-views. And I, and I know we got a lot of Khabib fans listening to the show. You're fucking sure. wrong if you think Khabib's that guy. He's not. Diehard fans know what a, what a talent that Khabib is. Your casual fans don't fucking care. He's that fucking weirdo from Russia. He'll be known as the guy that fought Connor now. Yeah, well, and that's exactly right. That's not the legacy you want. You want to have your own legacy. You no, know, yeah. oh, yeah, the guy that fought Connor and beat him. Eh, you Dude, know. Khabib could have a legitimate legacy if he fought Tony Ferguson and, and school. But I don't know how... I don't know the right way to phrase this. You can't take a guy from Dagestan and make him a star in America. It's tough. You can make him a star in other realms, but not here. Yeah, which... You but know, there are... And I realize it sounds fucking very egocentric to say, well, if you're not a star in America, you're not a star. But let's face fucking facts. How many fights are put on the fucking U.S. compared to how many fights are outside of the U.S.? Right. And, I mean, as far as, like, as big of the scope of the fight, if the fight is not in Vegas or New York, yeah, it's probably not going to be that big. Right, yeah, and fuck, we just had Lincoln, you know, to fight night Lincoln here a few yeah. weeks ago. And then, I mean, the fight card with Holloway and Ortega from uh, Canada, that just turned out to be pretty goddamn amazing. Yeah. You know, we had some quality quality acts on that one. But right. occasionally, I mean, because when we heard that was when, you know, that particular paper was going to be, we wrote it off already. And then they started announcing the fights. I was like, oh, shit, they're actually going to make that a big card. Yeah. They rarely yeah, well, do that. And they did, they had to rob Peter to pay Paul in order to make Damn that happen. Right. But Yeah, they had to really yeah. eviscerate a lot of the cards. Yeah. But yeah, I I just I truly like I said it, it makes me sound like an asshole to say it, but I don't think you can make Khabib a big star over here, and especially because of the fact that fucking half of casual fans are Conor McGregor fans. So yeah. You know, and, and they, always will be, no matter what. And you're not going to change their mind because yeah. the guy's just—he's witty and clever and and drunk. You know. Right. Yeah, and the, uh, lastly, anyway, but I would like to know oh, what yeah. I'd like to know what some of you guys. I mean, if you can weigh in, because I'm—I sure. I'm, could very well be fucking wrong. You know, like Josh Licker and the rest of you yeah. that listen to the show. Let us know in the comments because I—I'm probably wrong, but if I'd like to know what if, your take is. Like, what is the way to make Khabib a big star in the states? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to know. Uh, put us in the comments. And if you yeah. think he already is, then like show me, show us why. Right. Because I would like to know. Yeah. I, I, you can't use the numbers for the Connor pay per view because that was Connor. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I don't think Connor's going to have the same drawing power after that. But yeah, I think I think it chisels away. But I mean, but I think you make that fight with Cerrone now before yeah. all of his capital God is gone. Damn, dude, I almost think that's more of a murdering than than he might deserve. <laughs> Which one? I I'm talking Cerrone, man. The, I, I like. I want to think this dude. He thinks he's on his last run. That's why he's back down at 155, going for the belt. 
Well, both, and to do that, you got to jump right back in with the Sharks he was with, man. Connor went to uh, Jackson Wink for a little fucking brush up. I think that fucking helped out. Well, God damn, <laughs> man. I, I mean, <laughs> but shit between him and Kavanaugh is really rocky these days, it seems. Yeah. 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 I think hadn't he hadn't heard from Connor. I think you he got said a, if He said he wouldn't even corner him. You got to roll if out the Connor fight right. Wasn't right. You got to roll him out now. You got to get a fight set up somewhere. Yeah, because with that star o meter is really beginning to fall. Uh, outside of that, you got Mighty Mouse and Eddie Alvarez making their one debuts yeah. at the beginning of next year. Uh, I do believe March. Okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure the fighters they're fighting, but they will be making their debuts. I will adjust my drinking schedule to uh, take in the uh, one championship there. Yeah. So yeah. And I have to work New Year's Eve, so if that weird Floyd Mayweather Ryzen fight actually happens, I'll actually get to watch it live. No, nah, it ain't gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen either. Right. Uh, let's move on to my top five. Oh list. yeah, I forgot. This guy apparently thought to make a list as well. Top five podcasts of 2018. And nice. Count them down. Uh, yeah, these are all Rogan podcasts, by the way. Oh, oh, your favorite, <laughs> your favorite Bill Burr podcast. Uh, Great. Top five podcasts: the Mead Metal and MMA podcast of uh, 2018. Episode. Uh, let's see. My number five is episode number 63, titled "Secrets of Mayberry Revealed." UFC 221 preview. That was right uh, around the time I was getting ready to bail, wasn't it? We had served this one up um, in two parts. Ran a little long, and we were recording in stereo at the time, which really chips away at the amount of yeah. content we are able to put up. We're basically recording two lines of the same shit yeah, because we don't have any splitting. Right. But anyway, so a deep conversation on Mayberry. Uh, and the, uh, bottling and labeling of long ships and our thoughts on the 221 card. Number four on my list, episode 64, the next one. And you might be going, oh, did you get lazy? No. This was our first road trip ever to uh, Austin. It was the Austin man. road trip. We traveled to Austin, taking the UFC Which fight Which is weekend. my number one. That is my number one. Yeah. Covered our long road trip to Austin, our thoughts on the UFC fight night Austin that we took in while we were down there, and uh, where I quickly uh, became a fan of a couple of different fucking fighters that night. Uh, Curtis Millinder, who we're going to be seeing coming up next week. And uh, it really uh, solidified our love of Derek Lewis as well. Fuck yeah. Seeing All him right. do his work live. Number three, episode 91. That was our Rainier Fog review, Ooh. which got actually probably outside of talking about Winter Sun, um, got more thumbs down than I think we've had on most because yeah. people apparently fucking don't like Alex. Everybody thought we'd talk shit about Lane Staley, and that couldn't be farther from the yeah. truth, nope. man. No. Nope. Yeah, we uh, discussed uh, mainly primarily just Rainier Fog and also talked a little bit about the UFC fight card in Nebraska. Uh, number two, episode 104, which actually just a few weeks ago, we were joined by the Mighty Third. Oh, uh, yes. The Echoes of Ancients. Yeah, the t title of that one was the Triumvirate uh, United. We'd had uh, Brett and his girlfriend Darcy on. We'd reflected on times of old, Brandon's career in amateur porn, and our thoughts on metal and MMA going on that week. That is a, a personal favorite of mine. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. For a lot of reasons. And then my favorite, number one. For my top five podcast of 2018, episode 93, back in Austin, the UFC 228 <laughs> preview. Big shot. Yeah, recorded September 5th. Uh, so we didn't. We actually recorded before the Allison Chains concert. Yeah, we went down there to check out. Um, we did. We did, or I didn't, because I initially was one that said we're going to do a little something every day. Yeah. And then I realized how much we like to drink over there after the That's podcast. Right. I'm like, we're just going to do one. Just liquor. That's all we're there for. <laughs> anyway, joined by uh, my brother Daryl, we discussed a litany of topics, including the 228 card, expanding our love of AICs, Rainier Fog, among many other topics. So yes. My... Not to mention, you guys had a really great conversation about guitar rigs. Got and pretty shit. deep on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was went for a solid 20 minutes. Right. Yeah. Was, uh, that was, so those. Were my favorites again it's just an opinion so i'm not necessarily wrong not well, necessarily sure, we right. were there we were there for all of these yeah so anyway that's my top five yeah all right uh i have a gift for you that uh, it'd be awesome if you want to open it here on the show indeed i have a gift I, for you as well i think it'd be the uh, the way to go with this hold on yes uh the uh, mine is the one with all the uh, nordic runes drawn on it I drew myself Yeah, uh, yeah, that was not put on by me. Ah, little Santa bear. Hey, ah. I like it, Brandon. Thanks, yeah, no problem, bud. I, uh, if you if you look on the sides there, I I wrote hey, little Santa bear. I wrote uh, I wrote two statements in uh, in runes. I want to know if you can cipher one or the Merry other. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hmm? Merry Christmas, brother. No. 
don't know what the fuck that is. It's a uh, it's a eleven uh, ten letter word. Yeah. It's cocksucker. Oh, cocksucker. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. And a um, that that's four words that uh, it's it's four words. That other side. That one's a little tougher. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. I, that's uh, blessed are the peacemakers. Ah, in runes. Okay, well, there you go. I'm gonna rip these runes apart. And the, those are protection runes on the other side, yeah. by the way. Yeah, I can't even open this now. <laughs> it's too goddamn strong. That bear is also yeah. for protection. That's right. All right. Well, let me go ahead and see what we have here. The uh, you sure you want me to open this live, huh? Yeah, why not, man? All right. We're we're already doing it. We're doing it. Okay. All right, we both got each other the same white box. The same white box. Right. Different hey, size. Hey, it's an arrowhead. And on a uh, on a antler bone hilt. Yes, that is uh, that was inspired by Game of Thrones because you can kill some White Walkers with this <laughs> pitch. A Game of Thrones on the top and uh, Red Dead Redemption Two on the bottom. Wow. And that's a bit more of a decorative yeah. piece uh, right. made out of antler, uh, straight yeah, out of. Uh, it's now. actually made out of a calf bone. Oh, calf bone. Okay. Very cool, very cool, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can carry that on airplanes. And yeah, like. the uh, the piece, <laughs> the top, uh, the obsidian blade that was made by Pops. Wow, man! No, that's a great honor. And I polished the uh, the antler blade and like. No, that's, it, that's an put honor. Put it in the hill. Honor, dude. Indeed, man. Thank you, man. Use it well when with your first kill. I absolutely will. Now this has been. You have like really made me lose like hours of sleep. Oh, I didn't mean to. And I don't even know how to open it. It's just I just think it's cool. That's all. No, you said you were going to make me cry. Yeah, maybe, maybe, probably not. Tears of joy. I am on the rag. (laughs) All right. Oh wow! Wow! Damn, that came out fucking good. Where'd you get the idea to make a shirt? It is an echoes of ancient shirt. Yeah. Damn right. That's how it all started right there. Mead for that, metal. That yeah. hat in the back when we used Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a hashtag of mead for metal on the back. Oh, man, yeah. The uh, Zia knot. Um, Fucking and, A. Uh, echoes of Ancients on the front there. Yeah. That is all right. I will wear this with pride. This might be my new Friday shirt. <laughs> I wasn't trying to trump your. Uh, you might you, you might right usurp the fucking. Uh, well, I don't want to wear this also every Friday. I'd like to have something else to wear, too. Because then this will start to look like shit because I have to wash it. Yeah. Because then it smells like liquor and other odd substances. Right. It'd be nice to have something to tag in on the weekend. There you go. Dude, thank you for that. Absolutely. That is great. Yep. I hope you got one, too. Well, I don't want to really brag, but... Uh, uh, you I salty think. cunt. <laughs> <laughs> got it on you underneath. You wear it all along. Underneath, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> wow, man. Thanks a lot. That, yep. is, that is awesome. This that wouldn't has. happen to be a gift for another certain somebody, would it? Maybe. Maybe. Nice. Yeah. Really nice, dude. Well, because there's a minimum order, so, yeah. That's that's <laughs> great. How, uh, uh, anybody else? Uh, just the one that's on his way here. That's right. They can go fuck themselves. <laughs> anybody else? I, I don't know. Maybe. We'll, we'll, well see. Well, yeah, that that is awesome, dude. It, the design is awesome. I, I'm really glad you went with the fucking yellow and brown. Yeah. Really that, well, cool. I felt that was kind I didn't of want you. That I was like, root, yellow was and our, red would have sucked. That was our roots color. Yellow and brown is perfect. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. So, Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you. This and the uh, the RDR2 uh, guidebook that now officially is going to eat up more of my life. Yeah, there we go. Well, when I found a Viking helmet and hatchet and, like, <laughs> bone brush, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to stick around for another three months. On a Western game, yes, no less. So. Thanks right. again, man. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up so that way we can get some shit done around the meat hall here. There's um, a lot to do now. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit. I might have to go change shirts. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll say this is what we have uh, on the way next week. We'll uh, do a final uh, kind of a top five, maybe, maybe if we feel motivated enough. Yeah, to do it. anybody that's uh, in the area, you know, hey, stop by and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, let you bring your own beer and uh, we'll have a beer with you. We'll let you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll let right. you do right. it. That's right. <laughs> we will allow you to bring beer for us to drink with you. That's right. That's right. I'm starting to feel like Yari. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> All I need to do is build a golden sauna. Oh, man. <laughs> Times are changing. Thanks again, brother. Indeed. And a Merry Christmas to you lot. Yes, happy, indeed. Happy Yule. 
Uh, hopefully you've uh, you've enough logs to burn on your fire, and we will catch up with you coming up a week from today when we'll uh, go ahead and wrap up the year 2018. What a year it's been. Not in a bad way, not in a good way. I actually appreciate the way this fucking year kind of went. Uh, yeah, it found balance eventually. Eventually it did. Yeah, the yeah. film is nearly off the soul. Yeah, we're going to get rid of the rest of it next week. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Again, uh, only new record this week is live at Brixton Academy Motorhead. Check that out if you're a Motorhead fan. If you're not, maybe it'll, maybe it'll make you one, but probably not. But uh, yeah. Motorhead, new slow yeah. work song. If you're a metal guy, if you're an MMA guy, ain't nothing going on tomorrow unless you're a hardcore guy. Yeah. Yeah. They're like crazy weird little minor promotions, right? Might be an LFA card, maybe. Oh, uh, picks. Picks. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, for the week, uh, a drink of choice for me is going to be Budweiser this Jägermeister week. Jägermeister again. Yeah. The bottle must die. Uh, metal. Uh, again, Motorhead for me. I'm going to go the new slow work Slow work, yeah. yeah. We're pre- predictable in this one here. In this regard, um, MMA. Uh, I pick Shopping Cart by fucking <laughs> double leg takedown. <laughs> Slam and finish and done. Uh, yeah. I pick I, I pick Amanda Nunez pulling out after a uh, like some injury in training camp probably probably I don't know at least it won't be as dumb as cyborgs that's man. right somewhere it, it was fucking idiotic isn't it it was all stupid right before a fight and you're in a shopping cart oh, as a grown damn. ass man <laughs> all right anyway oh and by the way uh, for you Fortnite players I want to get this in uh, go fuck yourself yes yeah and. Uh God, I don't have any hatred in my heart right now. I have very little. I have very yeah. little. Let's go get drunk. Let's get drunk. All right. Hey, uh, anyway, uh, Ace of Spades on the air. It has to be. It has to be. Every every Motorhead record. Happy yeah. Christmas, bitches. Yeah. But that's the way I like it, baby.